Hey everybody, RC here. Going to do a Let's Play for Dwarf Fortress, and this is going to be, uh, again, why I'm doing most of these. They're for friends or groups that I uh, play around with, uh, play games with. Uh, one of the guys that I uh, got to know over at uh, the Skyrim Vault, Tamriel Vault, uh, got him trying to play Dwarf Fortress, and he was having some issues with it. Uh, gave him quite a few of the Let's Play videos that I kind of cut my teeth on, but I thought it would be nice to do a little walkthrough for him just to kind of get him started. So this will be a real basic uh, meat and potatoes uh, type Let's Play. Uh, not going to be going for anything specific. Just kind of get him to see how the game is played and some of the basic controls. And that seems to be the biggest learning curve. I know it was the biggest learning curve for me when I started playing. And by far, I don't know even half of what there is to know about this game. But it is a game that I think has a lot of replayability and uh, is a lot of fun to play. So uh, at this point, I have created a new world. Uh, we uh, will uh, start playing uh, Dwarf Fortress with the new world that I have created and I will let you know uh, one of the guys that I watch a lot of his let's plays is uh, from Dastastic and uh, I actually took his world generation and then I modified it just a little bit um, to uh, to meet my needs uh, so basically uh, this is uh, where you come up and you have uh, three screens here so you have your local area this is the area that you would be playing in and even within this area you only play a three by three world or even smaller or bigger as you see fit one of the things this game is a big memory drain on your computer and the larger your area the more lag the game seems to suffer um, not sure why that is uh, just you know, there's so many things going on in the background of this game that it's it's a resource hog. Uh, this is your regional map, uh, so basically this would be about this area, right in the central part of the world, and then you have the entire world. So you have three areas that you can look at, and basically you can see a few things in in my graphics pack. Uh, this little red circle is a volcano. Uh, and that's one that you can actually see. There should be seven according to the way that I've got my world gen set up. The green is typically tree areas. The yellow is desert areas. And the purple is indicative of evil areas. Uh, and the blue is, is typically water. Uh, you can see these blue little uh, statue icons. These are going to be dwarf uh, towns. Then you have elven towns uh, in the yellow, and human towns are in this blue look right here. So I kind of look in three, you know, I look at the world first, kind of get an idea where I want to go. Then I look at my regional, and then I can zoom in and fine tune. But the easiest way to do this is hit the F key and find desired location. So we're going to do that, and I want to look for. An area that does have a flux stone layer, that does not have an aquifer. I do like a river and multiple metals and some soil. You need soil to grow your crops. So that's kind of the basics. Uh, might be a little bit of a min-max, but uh, you know those are the things that I like to have. And then the game will actually search through the entire world zone, and you can see it doing that here. Anywhere there's a red X. It does not meet your criteria. A green X indicates there's at least one spot in that local zone that meets your criteria. So we'll let that finish and then we'll sort through the options and we'll find us a place to make our home here in uh, this Let's Play. And again, if you're just tuning in a little bit late, this is going to be a very, very uh, bare bones uh, and detailed uh, intro to the game, uh, again, to help out a friend of mine that wants to start playing it. All right, so we've got quite a few options to choose from here. We're going to escape, hit the escape key to browse results. 
So I've done that. And then you see a lot of options that are here. Now there's a few things that you want to look at. First you want to find the cursor, which is the yellow one up here. And as we move our up and down keys, it moves. And you can see it moving in all the all three map areas. But we're looking at the world right now. And you'll notice whenever we change from fields, you can see this biome area. It changes around. Sometimes it doesn't have any. Sometimes it has two. Sometimes it has one. Sometimes it has three. There was one with three for a second. Uh, so what we're going to do is just kind of look for a place. Now the blue area up here at the top, this is uh, frozen. This is a frozen polar area. And then you have the southern desert area or the equator type area. And sometimes these are flip-flopped, but typically you'll have one polar area, one uh, equ equatorial uh, desert area, and then you'll have a uh, forest area. And that'll be broken up into plains, temperate forests, jungles, various things, depending on how the world was created. So I particularly like... Uh, because I'm not the best Dwarf Fortress player by any stretch. I do like a lot of wood available in my playthrough. So what we can do is you can see as I'm moving through here. Once you get into an area that has an X on it. So like we're on the, we're on, we're looking to get onto this X and now we're on it. Then we have to come into the regional map and then you can fine tune. Because each time you hit the up or down key you're actually moving in the world you may have to hit the arrow three four five times to get off of that square now when you're looking in here you have uh, grassy areas jump uh, trees uh, you have this gray area which is a mount a mountainous region so you can set up to be in the mountains or you can set up to be right off the edge of the mountains and once you get there, then you use your U, M, K, and H keys, lowercase, to move around. And so I'm going to hit the U key, and then we're going to look up here at the local map and watch what happens. So I'm hitting up, up. Now I'm going to hit the H key, and it's going to go left. The K key goes right, and the M key goes down. So that's your up and down areas to move around here. So what we're looking for, what I like to look for, is something that has multiple biomes. You don't have to have that, but it just increases the opportunity of the things that you will see. Um, so then what you can do is you can hit F1, and then you can see the map light up, and that will show you over here what it has. Sand, soil, shallow metals, deep metals, and a flux stone layer. I'm going to hit F2. And it's going to switch over, and we have sand, shallow, and deep metals. Now, it's not on the river. There was a place on the river right there, but it didn't have multiple biomes, which was okay. Now, I can move to there, and then I can see that I have a lot of options here. Soil, clay, which I can also grow crops in. And this is also good, too, because you have a wilderness and, oh, shoot, I was hitting the wrong buttons. Let's see. Let me find that spot again. Uh, we were over here. Well, we can keep looking around. So basically what it does is it defaults in your local area to what you were searching for initially. So if you move it, you do run the risk of coming off of that area. So I do want to find one with multiple bi uh, biomes. And I'm just going to move around as I'm looking for that. All right, so here's an example. So we've got a 3x3 three three tile with three on the western side on the river. We have two biomes. The first biome, I uh, keep hitting the number one instead of F1. That's what I'm doing. 
Don't do that. And then as you can see, it doesn't always come back. All right, so here we go. F1 is untamed wilds, some metals, flux stone, clay, heavily forested. So that is going to give me basically three squares of forested area. Then I'm going to hit F2, <clears throat> and you see my other three squares light up because you don't have anything on the river. That's also heavily forested. Now that's untamed wilds for both of them. So we're going to go ahead and start here just to have a starting place. Now, the other thing you can do is hit once you've figured out where you think you want to go, hit the tab key. And then this area here will change. So there's a tab. So we have dwarves, elves, humans, and goblins who we are at war with. And you typically want as many of these as you can. You definitely want goblins or you won't have any combat. You'll just have trade unless you create wars with the humans and the elves because this is Dwarf Fortress and we play as dwarves. We'll hit tab again. And this gives you the four civilizations. Now, you'll notice that the Saber of Radiance is highlighted, and we can see the blue, blue icons down here. When I hit the plus key on my number pad, that changes it to the brushed pick, and you can see it's moved from this zone to over here. So that's where that civilization is. We'll go up to the Routed Works, and you basically don't see anything on the map. That means this is an extinct civilization or it's on the verge of extinction. And then you have the equal constructs up here in the northern area. And sometimes it's hard to see these. There's one right there. Looks like that's the routed work. So yeah, they're almost on the verge of extinction. So you probably don't want to play with them. Uh, they can't trade with you if they go extinct, and then you'll be the only village or town for that entire civilization. Then you become have the king, and you may or may not want that. So there are some other things you can do that we won't get into using DF Hack that you can and and Legends that you can look at the backgrounds of all of these groups before you pick. Um, we're not going to get into that much detail in this particular Let's Play. And I'm going to go with the Saber of Radiance. They look to be the largest. They're spreading up here to the northwest, and that's heading out. So we'll be basically in, in the way we want to think of how we're going to play our game. We'll be like a forward outpost moving up to the north. And maybe we're reaching out to the routed work to see what's going on up there. Uh, that we've heard uh, word has traveled to our mountain home of their troubles. And so we're setting up a forward outpost to kind of see what's going on up there. Uh, so we're going to pick that one. We'll tab through it. This shows your elevation. And it's color-coded. And you can see here um, we are down in this area here. We'll tab through again and you can see us, so we have zeros on the river, which is flat, and the rest of our area is twos, which is low cliffs. So that's fine. You may want to play in a mountainous region uh, with high peaks, and that changes up how you might design how you're going to live. Uh, so we've looked at the biomes. We've learned how to search for an area. We've looked through the different fields. So now we think we're ready to go, and we're going to hit E for embark. And you get a little pop-up. And sometimes it may say something about there's salt water here. This could be a hard place to play. And it gives you know, so it gives you an option if the, at this point. If you decide, wow, no, I don't like those terms, hit escape, and you can find another spot. But once you hit enter, we're into the game. So we're going to prepare carefully. So we use our up and down arrows to move through these and enter. And you can go through each one of these people. Uh, let's see. So we can, we can actually look at this person by hitting the V key. And it tells you to view. So while he's highlighted, we can hit V. And it will give you some background on him. Very strong, susceptible to disease. What does he like? Uh, bad intuition and lousy creativity. So he might not be a great crafter because he's not creative. Um, 
won't be good talking to people possibly because he has bad intuition. So he, we may not want him to be our traitor, but he is strong. So he could be a military person, but we have to watch out if he gets hurt that he is susceptible to disease. And you can do this, and this is getting into a little more detail than, than I want to get into right now in this Let's Play. So basically, I'm just going to set these guys up and just show you how to set them up. So we're going to use our arrow keys, and I'm going to hit the right arrow, and that's going to move from his name over to the right column, which we can now pick our statistics, basically. And you use the plus and minus keys to move uh, uh, to add points. So if I hit plus, you'll notice it gave moved him from not minor to novice minor and it took a point away so i like one very good minor at least one i'm going to use the left arrow we're back over here we're going to move down to the next person i want this guy to be a carpenter and a woodcutter then i'm going to go to get a mason and you notice I'm not making them great. You can choose to make them as powerful as you want. Uh, I like to have that start off a little weaker. Uh, my rationale for that is that they would not, the, whole, the mountain home would not send out their best people uh, to be one of these frontal outposts. Uh, they would keep those people working in the mountain home. So these are apprentices, uh, people that have been training. But because they are dwarves and they spend their entire lives underground for the most part, uh, it makes sense for them to uh, be able to mine. So that's where I justify that. So a carpenter does woodworking. A mason builds things out of rock. A stone crafter. Uh, who I just added one there. He can make he can make items out of stone, things like nest boxes for your birds to lay eggs in, uh, crafts that you can sell, uh, things of that nature. So I like a stone crafter. Then we need to get a grower, and I'm going to make him my brewer and cook as well. Uh, brewing is the alcohol that dwarves drink. Uh, very, very important. Growing is the food. Uh, this guy, I need a butcher and a tanner, and that can be very low end. I am going to make him a mechanic as well. Uh, he can make uh, mechanisms for traps and uh, drawbridges and things of that nature. And the last guy, I'm going to make him... I usually change this up. Sometimes, I'll, depending on the zone, I may want to bring a, a militia person. So I would add in some, some points in this area. Um, this appears to be not a too bad of an area. So I'm going to make him a diagnostician, a wound dresser, and a suture. I'm also going to make him my negotiator, persuader. And then I'm going to go back up and fill some of these other points in. I need... A record keeper to be my bookkeeper and I need an organizer and an appraiser I like another appraiser and then this last guy he's got a couple of points left now the doctor's not going to do a whole lot at least not initially and hopefully we don't keep him too busy I'm going to give him the rest of his points and make him a miner as well. So then we're going to come down and hit tab and that brings us to our items list. So this left item is what we're currently bringing with us on our trip and the right side is things that we can choose to bring from the mountain home. Now you only have so many points and each thing has a point value assigned to it. Now there are this list will show everything that you have enough points to accumulate. Uh, so what I usually do is, you notice we're highlighted with copper picks. I made two miners. I'm going to keep that. Uh, you use the axes to chop down trees. We do have a woodcutter, but I only need one. So I'm going to hit the minus key on my number pad, and that's going to change that from a 2 to a 1. And I get that 68 points back to use. You do want to bring an anvil. Now, 
you need a steel anvil if you're de- embarking on a volcano because only steel anvils can withstand the heat of a magma forge. An iron anvil you can use anywhere. Uh, so you can actually choose not to bring that if you need the 100 points. And then you can buy one uh, with your first trade caravan if you need the points. Uh, this is kind of a, a, not a cheat, but I always add one to all of my beers and the reason why is because it stay it stacks in volumes of 10 so this gives me a third barrel and I when it's gone I will have an extra barrel and I will do the same thing with my uh, seeds as well if I can do that uh, I do like plump helm is your it's it's like a mushroom and it's your nuts and bolts uh, meal it's your gonna be your staple uh, you can eat it, you can brew it, you can cook it. Uh, so you definitely want to bring a good number of those to get started. Now, when you eat a plump helm or you brew a plump helm, it saves the seed. If you and so you can replant it. If you cook, it destroys the seed. So you have to keep that in mind. Uh, and we'll get to that uh, when we start playing. Um, I grow those year round. So I'm going to take less of the others because most of those are seasonal uh, and you can only grow them two of the four seasons of the year. Uh, Let's see, we have some thread, cloth, bags, ropes. I don't need the quivers right now and leather's relatively cheap in the game so I will usually buy that. Um... I usually get rid of the buckets, splints, crutches, wheelbarrow, and stepladder as well, just to get the points back, and I can make those quickly with my carpenter. Now, the reason I do that is because now I'm up to 373 points. So now I've used my right arrow. I've come over to the right side. I want to get a, uh, I want to get three female dogs, actually just two, and we're going to get one male dog. We're going to get two female cats and a male cat, and you get mating pairs, and they make more animals. Now, we can train the dogs to hunt. We can kill these for food and leather. Um, you know, a lot of different options. I, I like to bring, uh, let's see, we'll bring, we'll bring a sow and a boar. Those can stay inside in a minute. And then I will bring, um, I like turkeys, so we'll bring four turkey hens, a turkey gobbler, and that leaves me 160 points. So we're going to hit the left arrow, we're back on this side, and now we can uh, add, uh, hit new, in for new, and what that's going to do is it's going to bring up a shopping list so we can scroll down through the list and then pick what we want so that you know this is where you can fill in uh, some different items that you may want uh, so let's see we had some thread already I uh, don't need any nest boxes I can make those pretty quickly let's see uh, this is a good point if you have enough points, but it, it's balancing out your needs and desires. So, you know, you might want to bring uh, that iron helm, but if you don't have a soldier to wear it just yet, then it may not make a lot of sense. Uh, let's see. Tell you what, I'm going to bring an extra pick. Actually, you know what? That's 110. I'm going to delete that, and we're going to go up and bring a third pick there. The reason I want to do that is just in case I, I get a, somebody else that can mine that comes in right away, then I can uh, have that on hand. Uh, I'll bring some fish, and we'll up that to uh, 11. I'll bring in some more ale. We'll up that to 21. I still have 52 points. I'll bring some more leather. And you can see there's varying points. You have 5 point leather, 10 point, 15 point, 20 point leather. Uh, at the beginning, you really want to just as, as inexpensive as possible. Alright, so I'm going to do that. I have 2 points left. I'll just bring another ale because you 
can't ever have enough to drink. At this point, we can hit capital F, so shift F, and you can choose your name for your for your fortress. And I'll just randomize and see what jumps out at me. Uh, anvil trumpets. Doors, we're going to be doing forging. The sound of anvil hammers ringing, ringing out throughout the, the, the land uh, from our new outpost. I like that. So we'll go with anvil trumpets. And I'm going to go ahead and put a cut in right here because that's basically finished. And we will actually get started with the playing in our next episode. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.